Hello and welcome to our special volatility uh, uh, session here um, for you. Uh, I want to go through three key indicators um, that you can use um, on your charts uh, in volatile markets. These are indicators that might prove useful uh, across any range of markets, whether it's uh, indices. We're, we're going to use Germany 30 here, the DAX as an example. Um, but it can be applied to anything, cryptos, commodities, gold, oil, whatever it is, uh, these indicators can be applied. Uh, you can find your indicators up here um, above the chart. Uh, we've obviously got uh, dozens and dozens of different indicators here. Uh, but I've added, um, well, I've added four, actually, but I'll explain why. It's actually three that we're looking at. Um, and we will um, try to um, explain why why we're doing this. So first up, Bollinger Bands. I've added the Bollinger Bands here. Um, you can see um, here what we have is the median line, uh, the upper line in blue, and the lower line also in blue. Now these are added across the chart, so they're on top of the price action of the chart. Um, and what they do, what Bollinger Bands do, are uh, create a price envelope around the price action, which is um, the upper and lower bands are two standard deviations away from the historic 20-day moving average. And what that does is it means that 95% of price action is contained within the bands. Um, these are interesting. You can create price targets from these, from the upper and lower bands. Um, I think the on the daily chart there it's a bit tight for quite a long time um, but here on the one hour chart you can see how price action tends to move towards the top of the band it may stay at the top of the band for a long time it may move through the band um, but then it will uh, draw back down and move back eventually towards the lower band so these bollinger bands are are useful they can create help you create price targets and uh and uh, can be used in volatile markets because they do help to describe um, whether or not uh, markets are trending or whether or not we're in a period of consolidation. As the bands narrow, you may expect to see a breakout, and that can be uh, that can be probably best evidence on the one-day chart. See this very tight range here, and then we get this widening. As they widen. Uh, you would then expect to see it narrow again. So the Bollinger Bands are very, uh, very useful for that sort of thing. Um, if we explain just a bit more about this um, afterwards, but I'll take those off for now. Uh, you can see now we're on the daily chart here. The other, uh, the next one that we want to look at is. Uh, the average true range indicator, that's the ATR, that's here, it's on a 14 period um, range. Uh, and the true range differs from a simple range and in that includes the close of the prior bar within its calculation. The ATR is a pure volatility measure. Um, it doesn't necessarily indicate a trend. Um, it's quite possible that you could have volatile price movement um, within quite a choppy market, and is often the case um, around sort of news events, or data releases, that kind of thing. Um, I think the best way to use the ATR um, is as an indication of the change in the nature of the market. For example, uh, we may see the ATR rise as the market moves from a tight, uh, a tight consolidation to a strong trend. Uh, for example, we saw it rising here. Um, here, I think this is a good example here. So as we see this consolidation pattern here, actually the, the ATR indicator is starting to tell us that it's starting to move and it does, it gaps lower here and then accelerates down and then it starts to flat, the ATR starts to flatten out just as we hit the bottom of the market there on the DAX. Um, ATR um, has has a couple of drawbacks, but we'll, we'll just talk um, about those um, later. Uh, I think the main one probably is it doesn't actually indicate which direction it's going to go. It's never going to tell you which direction it's going. Um, but what it does do is indicate um, uh, whether or not um, we are in a volatile market or not. Um, next one is the ADX, Average Directional Index, down the bottom here, 14 period again. Now, I've included that just to show it on, on its own. Um, this uh, measures the strength of a trend based on highs and lows of the price bars over uh, the last 14 days, for example, 14 hours if you're on an hourly chart and so on. Um, 
a move down in the ADX is considered uh, to signal the end of a trend. Um, so if it's moving down, we start to look at towards the end of a trend. And indeed, we can see through February, uh, commencing at the back end of last year, we've seen a movement down um, and it hovers in these low areas. It's telling us, in fact, that the trend, the, ra the rally, long-term rally is maybe starting to, to come to the end. And of course, we get a sharp move in the ADX line here um, as we see the, the pullback. Uh, move down in the ADX, as I say, is a signal uh, to end of a trend. Um, while the ADX is below 20 or 25, um, you'd usually expect the market to be in consolidation. And that's what we had here, consolidating at the top there. Um, as long as ADX is continuing to rise, the trend remains strong. So the ADX line here, uh, continuing to rise, tells us that this is an aggressive, strong, trending lower market. Uh, as it flattens out and starts to turn lower, it's telling us that that trend is weakening. The far right of the chart, you can see, um, you can see uh, where where we're at with that. Um, Again, though, ADX does not indicate the direction of the trend, um, and that's where it comes in, and that's why we have this uh, fourth indicator here, and this is actually the one to use. Um, I feel the DMI, Directional Movement Index, um, which incorporates the red line of the Directional Movement Index is exactly the same as the ADX. So it incorporates the ADX line within the uh, DMI uh, level, so we can remove our ADX line here. And we'll just leave that uh, DMI and ADX com combination at the bottom. Remember, you can find all these in the indicators section here. Uh, it, directional movement is the, the one that we're on, DMI. Um, now, this uh, particular um, uh, DMI indicator is again, it's uh, Wells Wilder um, who developed it in 1978. He developed the ADX line as well. Uh, when uh, what you have, if I can show you three lines, the ADX line in red, that's that average directional index. And then we also have the uh, negative DI line and the positive DI line. Uh, these, are, these are crucial. Uh, these help explain where the market might be at any one time. Um, I'll close that. So blue is the positive line. Um, when the positive, i.e. the blue line, is above the negative, i.e. the orange line, uh, for example here, uh, there's more upward pressure than downward pressure on prices. So this is actually giving you an indication of the direction of prices as well. Um, and that's when you see the blue line, the positive DI line, move below, um, then there's more downward pressure on prices. Crossovers between the lines uh, can be used as buy and sell signals. Uh, for example, here you see the orange line move through that blue line and that's telling us early on of a major shift in the direction of the trend. And indeed that was that here was a very powerful signal and proved to be very, very good and accurate. So the directional movement index, uh, you've got two lines, uh, the blue uh, positive line, the orange negative line. Uh, you can set the colors differently yourself, of course, but those are the main ones. Um, uh, positive DI line um, above the negative DI line, so when the blue line is above the orange line in this case, uh, it means there's more upward movement than downward movement in the market and vice versa if the negative DI line is above the positive DI line. So when the orange line is above the blue line here, uh, it means there's more downward movement. Crossovers can be used to signal emerging trends. Uh, for example, a DI line above, uh, a negative DI line above the positive DI line means there's more downward movement than upward movement. Crossovers can be used to signal emerging trends. And the larger the spread between the two lines, the stronger the price trend. I think that's important as we get here. This widening of the gap tells you that the price trend is strong and therefore uh, the trend is 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 very powerful uh, so when it's close together as you can see here in and out in and out in and out there's not really an awful lot that's telling us there's a lot of noise a lot of noise and then bang here we get the big move um, and you also see that move with this adx line moving sharply 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 now at the moment on the dax what we're seeing is these di lines are converging the adx line is dropping um, and that's telling us that this sharp move lower, that trend 
has weakened considerably. Not to say it can't resume, but certainly it's weakening considerably. We are starting to see some consolidation of this push higher. Uh, these three, uh, three advancing candles here, bit of consolidation happening, perhaps best showed on the hourly chart, a bit of consolidation happening after that move higher. Uh, and we'll look to see whether this uh, particular pattern pushes to the upside or the downside, but uh, interesting moves. So those are your three um, indicators. The DMI complete with the ADX line uh, here. That's the directional movement indicator index. Um, the average true range, ATR, and as well are Bollinger Bands, which add overlaid onto the price action. So that's our three chief volatility indicators that we use. Um, do drop us a line at expertmarkets.com if you have any questions at all about any of this. And we'll have more uh, updates for you about volatility and uh, different trading techniques in due course. Thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.